वेलकम अगेन डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन दी पार्ट टू ऑफ मेटल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस इन ट्रांसमिशन ऑफ एनर्जी सो हाउ द मेटल कॉम्प्लेक्सेस कैन ट्रांसमिट द एनर्जी हेयर वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द मैकेनिज्म ऑफ दैट सो दिस विल इन्वॉल्व द डिफरेंट स्टेप्स ऑफ फोटोसिंथेसिस रिएक्शंस in the previous lecture we have discussed about the pigments uh, three pigment we have uh, pigments we have discussed about they are uh, 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 chlorophyll a chlorophyll b and carotenoid in carotenoid we have studied the beta carotene so this carotenoid that is beta carotene they these carotenoids they are present in all green plants and photosynthetic bacteria and this carotenoids they acts as antenna in the light harvesting system so i will show you the light harvesting complex or system where you will find the first pigments that absorb the light energy they are carotenoids and these carotenoids they absorb the light energy and then transfer this energy to the chlorophyll okay so this is actually the channel carotenoid they absorb the light and then they transfer their energy to the chlorophyll and they protect the photosynthetic apparatus from photo oxidative damage and these carotenoids they also acts as quencher of chlorophyll triplet and singlet state so they quench the triplet and singlet state of chlorophyll so these are the functions of carotenoids carotenoids are very important part of the plant that take parts in the transmission of energy and but these are the non metallic parts okay so these are the non metallic pigments that takes part in the transmission of energy and they transfer their energy to the chlorophyll this is the figure that denotes the light harvesting harvesting complex so here you can find that this is the light harvesting complex in this case you will find the top in the top the carotenoids they are present then chlorophyll b then chlorophyll a so the light from sun it absorbed by the carotenoids and then these carotenoids they transfer their energy to the chlorophyll b and then they transfer their energy to the chlorophyll a and then they transfer this to the reaction center so this part the pigments they are together they are known as antennae complex so this is this box as the antenna like the antenna receives the signals likewise these pigments they receives the light energy and transfer this energy to the reaction center these are some other pigments which are present in some bacteria and algae so phycobilly proteins are the water soluble pigments that are found in cyanobacteria and red algae so uh, these are the other pigments so the pigments like chlorophyll uh, then carotenoids they are not present in red algae and cyanobacteria but these are the pigments so each phycobilly protein subunit phycobilins they are joined with the specific proteins and phycobilins are found on the outer face of thylakoid membrane so again in case of cyanobacteria and red algae the phycobilins are present on the membrane of thylakoid and they also acts as antennae likewise in case of the higher plants and green plants the carotenoids chlorophyll b and chlorophyll a they acts as the antenna complex likewise in case of cyanobacteria and red algae phycobilins they acts as antennae 
okay so the different phycobilins are phycocyanin phycoerythrin allo uh, phycocyanin they are the important phycobilins i think you can understand that likewise in case of higher plants uh, like the pigments like carotenoids, chlorophyll B, chlorophyll A, they are the light absorbing pigments and they act as the antenna. Likewise, in cyanobacteria and red algae, the phycobilins they act as antennae, and these are the different phycobilins. Now, come to the process of photosynthesis. So, if we see uh, in case of photosynthesis, where you uh, have studied that uh, the process of conversion of light energy into chemical energy is the process of photosynthesis. So this photosynthesis is of, uh, it, 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 is, it contains two kind of reactions. So one reaction is light dependent reaction, where the light is very necessary. And the other type of reactions, they are light independent reactions. So these light independent reactions, they are also called as dark reactions. Okay. So these are the dark reaction and these are the light reactions. So in the light reactions, I will show you how in the light reactions, the light energy will be absorbed and the production of NADPH and ATP and O2 will take place. So, the light dependent reactions, they are actually, they initiate via the absorption of light energy. So, during this reaction, the production of NADPH, ATP and O2 will take place. And the produced NADPH will provide electrons to the dark reaction. And this ATP will provide the energy to the dark reaction. So, this dark reaction that is light independent reaction, it obtain electrons and energy from NADPH and ATP that are produced in the light dependent reactions. Then light dependent reactions, they can occur via two processes. The Actually, they can occur, they, the electron flow, they also, uh, if uh, they also form some electrons, uh, uh, so the electrons can flow via two processes. They can flow via cyclic elect electron flow or through non-cyclic electron flow. So we will study the light dependent reactions where you will find the absorption of light is the first step of these reactions. So, in these light dependent reactions, you will find, first you will uh, study about the light harvesting complex. And these light harvesting complex, in this again you can see that these are the pigments. These are the pigments. In these pigments, the light when light falls on these pigments which are present in the thylakoid membrane then the light energy will transfer through these pigments to the reaction center okay so this is the antenna complex this is the antennae complex this antennae complex transfer the energy to the reaction center okay and in this reaction center, you will find the electron transfer. So, two kind of reactions takes place in the light reactions. One is energy transfer and another is electron transfer. So, these pigments are nothing but they are carotenoids. They are chlorophyll A. They are chlorophyll B. So, chemical oxidation and reduction reaction causes long-term energy storage. They collect energy, the pigments, they collect the energy and transfer it to the reaction center. And at this uh, center, the chemical reaction stores some energy 
by transferring electron from chlorophyll. So they transfer electrons from chlorophyll to an X electron acceptor molecule. I will show you the mechanism. The electron they are donated by the chlorophyll molecule to some acceptor molecule. Okay. So this is a kind of electron transfer and this electron transfer may take place through cyclic process or through non-cyclic process. So this reaction is the light uh, dependent uh, reaction. Uh, these are the light dependent reactions where two kind of reactions takes place. One is energy transfer and other is electron transfer. So I have uh, told you that during electron transfer, the chlorophyll donate its electron to some acceptor. And during this donation, the chlorophyll reduces. The electron, first the donor will give electron to the chlorophyll. Okay, then this chlorophyll will reduces. And this chlorophyll can donate its electron to any acceptor, then it will again oxidize. Okay, how electron transfer takes place? Some donor gives electron to the chlorophyll. Reaction centers are also the chlorophylls. So electrons are donated to the chlorophyll and these chlorophyll, they can donate their electrons to some acceptor. So first this chlorophyll will reduce and then after transferring this electron to some other acceptors, this chlorophyll will again oxidized. The transfer of energy is completely a physical process. So no chemical change will take place here. Okay. And many chlorophyll molecules, they, they send the energy to this reaction center and all the time this reaction center the system remains active so all the time the center remains active it absorbs light and transfer like this will occur at all time now we will see that what happens when a chlorophyll absorbs light energy so when chlorophyll absorbs light energy what kind of uh, changes may occur or what kind of uh, reactions can take place. When chlorophyll molecule absorb energy from the sun, so it absorbs the energy from the sun, then the it enters from the ground state to the excited state. Okay. So its electrons will excite to the excited state. Actually, this chlorophyll will excite from ground state to excited state. And in the excited state, but in it comes to its ground state, due to the excitation state, it becomes unstable. And it can give up its energy. Now the energy can be given up in some forms. So it can release in the form of heat. So when it comes to its ground state, then the energy can evolve in the form of heat or it can evolve in the form of fluorescence. That it, it can emit the light, it can emit the heat. So this is one aspect. So when it goes from ground state to excited state, it can emit the energy in the form of light, that is fluorescence, or it can emit the light in the form of heat. The other aspect is that it can transfer the energy to other chlorophyll molecule. And this has been seen in the previous slide that in the light harvesting complex the one chlorophyll molecule can transfer its energy to the other chlorophyll molecule and the third aspect is that the higher energy electron so there is an higher energy electron so this higher energy electron 
electron can be transferred to some acceptor molecule and this this molecule which already transfers its electron to the acceptor it can accept electron from any donor so that it will remain in its ground state okay so this chlorophyll molecule it can donate its electron to any acceptor so if it donate it will oxidize and it can accept electron from any donor so that it again it become reduced so this these are the three main processes the one process is the evolution of this energy in the form of heat or light the second is the transfer of energy to the other chlorophyll molecule and third is the transfer of electron the two last uh, aspects are very important in case of photosynthesis so these two processes they occurs in the photosynthetic reactions now you have seen that the chlorophyll molecule can donate its electron to some acceptor so the flow electron flow or electron transfer may be of two types one is cyclic electron flow and another is non cyclic electron flow so the, here we will discuss about the cyclic electron flow so because these uh, pigments they are present in the thylakoid membrane so this cyclic electron flow takes place in the thylakoid membrane it uses photosystem 1 so in photosystem 1 p for pigment so it is also called as p700 the this reaction center will absorb the light energy of about 700 nanometer and here the reaction center is generally chlorophyll a so you can see that in this case the light was absorbed by these pigments these are the carotenoids the chlorophyll b chlorophyll a so these absorb the light and then transfer the light to the reaction center and in this reaction center you will find the flow of electron this chlorophyll will absorb the light so it will go to the excited state and from there it can donate its electron to some electron acceptor species and there are some intermediate species you can find and the flow of electron is cyclic type so this will uh, transfer its electron to some another species then to some another species and finally this species is the electron donor so it can donate its electron to this chlorophyll okay so it is the donor so this is uh, donating the electron to this center so that it become reduced then it can get, uh, donate its electron transfer its electron to the acceptor so that it will again oxidize and during this electron transfer process the atp synthesis takes place so here adp will react with uh, this inorganic phosphate and atp will be formed so this is a kind of phosphorylation reaction where atp will be formed and this is the part of this is the part of light dependent reaction so when does this cyclic electron flow takes place so this cyclic electron transfer takes place when two little atp is produced relative to nadp so if nadph uh, the amount of nadph is high and the atp is low so this uh, cyclic electronic transfer takes place when nadph production is less Uh, it's more as compared to this atp production so atp production is very low so because in this cycle only atp is produced so you can see to balance the production of atp and nadph 
I have told you uh, in some slide that during light dependent reactions ATP will be produced, NADPH will produce, O2 will produce. So if NADPH is higher and ATP is lower, then the cyclic kind of electron transfer will take place using photosystem 1. Okay. So, during this cycle, you have find that no NADPH will produce, no oxygen will produce, so only ATP will be produced. So, this ATP produ production will balance the amount of ATP and NADPH because if NADPH will be higher, then ATP is less, then only ATP should be produced. So, this ATP should be produced only through photosystem 1 where the electrons will transfer through cyclic process okay because atp is required for the dark cycle that is known as kelvin cycle and this is the light independent process so this light independent process it requires atp so if atp will be less then the electron transfer will take place via cyclic process so you can find that in this cyclic process, no NADPH will be formed and no O2 will be formed. Only ATP will be formed. So if ATP will be formed, then this ATP will be helpful in the uh, dark cycle. Then non-cyclic electron flow. So this kind of non-cyclic electron flow occurs always. So, cyclic kind will uh, takes place only when the ATP is less and the non-cyclic electron flow, it occurs at all time and it requires two kind of photosystems, photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. In the photosystem 1, it absorbs the far red light that is greater than 680 to 700 nanometer. And it consists of both kind of chlorophylls, chlorophyll A and chlorophyll B. And this photosystem, it occurs in the stroma and edges of granum. So this photosystem is present at the edges of granum. And at the edges of granum, because these granum, they are, uh, they are present in the stroma. So the edges of granum and the stroma the photosystem 1 is present and this photosystem 1 generates a strong reductant that is capable of reducing NADP to NADPH and weak oxidant so it generates a strong reductant and weak oxidant because in photosystem 1 NADP has to be reduced so it will require a strong reductants and strong reductants will be generated in the photosystem 1. Now the photosystem 2. The photosystem 2 it absorbs red light at 680 nanometer and here mostly chlorophyll A is found and generally no or very less chlorophyll B will occur and this photosystem 2 it occurs in the granum. Okay. and it generates a strong oxidant because it has to oxidize water into oxygen so it requires strong oxidizing agents so two kind of reactions occur in these two centers in photosystem one reduction will takes place of NADP to NADPH so I have told you that in the a light dependent process ATP this NADPH will be produced okay and in the second I have told you that oxygen will also be formed so uh, during the oxygen formation uh, strong oxidants are required so strong oxidant will oxidize water into oxygen so oxygen will produce and NADPH produce and during the electron transfer ATP will also be produced. So three, you have to learn about the three things. One is ATP, the other is NADPH and the third one is the oxygen. So these three uh, 
products will be formed during light dependent process this is uh, the non cyclic flow of electron so here you will find this is the photosystem 2 and this photosystem 2 the chlorophyll a mostly is it absorbs the light of uh, around 680 nanometer so it absorbs the light of 680 nanometer then goes this is the chlorophyll and goes to the excited state and from this excited state it can transfer its electron to these different species so this is the electronic transfer and during this electronic transfer the formation of ATP will takes place okay huh? now it will produce strong oxidant so due to presence uh, production of a strong oxidant how it produces a strong oxidant because it is giving its electron to this so by giving the electrons it will produce an strong oxidant and this strong oxidant can accept electrons from this reaction this H2O will oxidize to O2 and during this reaction electrons will evolve and these electrons will be accepted by this system and then this will again transfer their electrons to these species so i have told you that this chlorophyll accept electrons from some donor species so donor species is h2o so it is do donating electrons to this thus this uh, this will be reduced and after this this can uh, this can again donate its electron to the series of these compounds so that it becomes oxidized so it is strong so due to the presence of a strong oxidant this h2 will oxidize to o2 now here during the electron transfer this atp formation will takes place okay so this is phosphorylation so this is the non cyclic phosphorylation okay the formation of ATP from ADP is the phosphorylation now this is the photosystem one so these electrons they are goes to the photosystem one and this photosystem one is also absorbing the light of range of 700 nanometer and it will produce a strong reductant and this strong reductant will convert this NADP to NADPH so you can see production of three molecules three kind of compounds takes place one is NADPH the other is ATP and the third one is O2 so these three they produced during the uh, non-cyclic flow of electrons in a light dependent uh, this uh, photosynthetic process and this figure is showing the chemi osmotic mechanism of ATP synthesis. So this ATP synthesis can take place via the, the gradient of protons. Okay. So this is the photosystem second. I have told you that photosystem second absorbs the light of 680 nanometer so it absorbs light and here the strong uh, this uh, oxidant will be formed so this h2 will be oxidized to o2 and during this conversion electrons will evolve and these electron will pass through this uh, this photosystem second and then this electron will pass through this and they goes to the photosystem one and during this transfer of electrons ATP will be formed how ATP will be formed you will find that this photosystem one and photosystem second they are separated or you can see that they are joined to each other via cytochrome B6F okay 
so these electrons will uh, transfer here and these electrons they will transfer to the nadp and then these nadp will convert into nadph okay and during the formation of water molecule the electrons will be formed and along with this the h plus will also be formed so you will find that these h plus will be higher in concentration in the thylakoid lumen the thylakoid lumen is the 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 liquid inside the thylakoid okay so in this thylakoid lumen the concentration of hydrogen will increases and these hydrogen will transfer from this so there is a concentration gradient of hydrogen ion inside the thylakoid lumen and stroma so these hydrogen will move towards the stroma so during this gradient transfer this is the atp synthetase so at this the formation of atp will takes place due to the gradient difference in the concentration of h plus so atp formation will takes place so this is the mechanism how atp formation occurs in the during the photosynthetic process so let's uh, summarize the light dependent reaction so this light dependent reactions they are also called as hillman reactions they occurs in the presence of light okay because they are light independent process they occurs in grana they occurs in grana because grana they are made up of thylakoids and thylakoids they contain the different photosynthetic pigments this is a kind of photochemical reaction and during this reaction the chlorophyll molecules excited by the absorption of photons and they can emit the energy in the form of heat in the form of efflorescence in the form of energy transfer or the light reactions of photosynthesis okay and uh, thus the absorption of light it occurs via chlorophyll a and chlorophyll b and keratinoids that are present in the thylakoid membrane of the chloroplast photosynthesis has two reaction centers one is photosystem 1 so in case of non cyclic electron flow there are two reaction centers one is photosystem 2 and another is photosystem 1 in case of photosystem 2 it absorbs the light of the range of 680 nanometer it generates strong oxidant and weak reductant so this strong oxidant it helps in oxidizing this water to oxygen this process occurs in the granum so during photosynthesis uh, photosystem 2 uh, this reaction occurs in granum and synthesis of atp takes place so you can see that in photosystem 2 two, two kind of uh, changes you can see one is the oxidation of water to oxygen and other is the synthesis of atp now the second system where the electron transfer uh, takes place is the photosystem 1 which absorbs far red light at 700 nanometer and it generates strong reductant and weak oxidant and this strong reductant is helpful in the reduction of nadp to nadph and this uh, reaction occurs at the stroma so this uh, in photosystem 1 you have seen that production of nadph takes place overall if we see these two reactions that is photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 we will find that the total three changes takes place so one is the formation of oxygen from water molecule the other is the synthesis of atp and the third one is the production of nadph from nadp so these three are the main products of the the light 
in uh, the light dependent photosynthetic part what is i i will revise again that o2 atp and natph uh, synthesized or we can say generates during the light dependent process and this atp and natph they can be utilized in the dark cycle atp will provide the energy and natph will provide the electron to the dark cycle uh, which is known as the kelvin cycle and in this way these two will be helpful in proceeding to the second part of the photosynthesis that is the light independent uh, light independent photosynthetic reactions this is the overall photosynthetic reaction so if we see the photosynthesis then we will find that there are two kind of reactions one is light reaction and the other is the dark reaction and this dark reaction is also called as uh, this kelvin cycle so during the light reactions the h2o molecule will oxidize to oxygen and the during the electron transfer atp production will takes place and natph production will also takes place in presence of light and in the dark cycle this atp the produced atp that is produced from the light reactions and the natph they they, they are used to reduce this carbon dioxide to sugar so this is the final photosynthesis and in this light reactions the the metal complexes that are the chlorophyll complexes they are used to transfer the energy and this is the reaction of the kelvin cycle where you will find that the atp produced from the Uh, the light reaction and NADPH produced from the light reaction, they are utilized to reduce the carbon dioxide to the sugar. So this is all about the photosynthetic reactions. So thank you very much.